Hey folks, for the third episode of the Fireside Chat, it brings us to the serene village of Raid Ridge, where we discuss how to improve your chances of success in Mythic Plus Pugs. In this video, you'll see me reference a few resources. All these are provided in the description below. Firstly, a dungeon cheat sheet where you can copy and paste simple text reminders to your Pug groups. And secondly, a bolstering weak aura, which automatically marks the mobs with the highest health as Skull, implying they should hit Skull first, basically. Enjoy this fireside chat, let me know if you have any topics you'd like me to discuss in the comment sections below and I'll see you at the end of this video. So for today's fireside chat, it's a question that I think I got quite a, you know, I get quite a lot on stream, which is, do you have any tips for pugging keys? And you guys see me pugging keys all the time on my stream. I would say I have a decent success rate, probably 85 to 90%, the 15% being all the bad click four runs that we did together where I was trolled by a lot of people that, you know, if you look through my vaults, you'll probably find them. But most of the time, I think hard keys do go generally smoothly because I do try and adhere to certain um, guidelines just to ensure I have kind of an easier time, right? So when someone asks me about, do I have any tips for just pugging Mythic Plus? There's a couple of things that comes to mind. And I just want to talk about a few of them today. The first of which is group composition. Now I know this is contentious. A lot of people feel like group composition is just an excuse for people to say, oh, I'm just going to stick to the meta. I'm going to bring one Boomy, one Fire Mage, one VDH, one Shammy heals, and uh, one Windwalker or Rogue, and we'll you know smash it at a plus 5, plus 10, or plus 15. And yes, that exists in parks, but I'm talking about group comms that is more specific to affixes. So I kind of want to talk about affixes today and what goes through my mind when I'm forming park groups for certain affixes on certain weeks. So let's just go down the list. And if you guys have questions about affixes specifically, I will, I will of course address them directly. And the first one that comes to mind obviously is bursting bursting is probably the affix that saw quite a bit of change coming into shadowlands the first of which you know the reason being you can actually mess the spell bursting from priest that was pretty huge a change so you guys think about bursting and how your groups and pucks deal with it right nobody really will stop their dps at four stacks or five stacks they would usually roll into five, six, seven. And I think having a priest in the party does help if you have a priest that you can rely on to mess the spell, bursting. Like every other pack, you can probably do that. The other thing that you should take note of in bursting weeks is <clears throat> you should probably get the weak aura or the macro that will yell to the party when you're at four stacks. Like, it, I think it says something like calm your fingers, four stacks bursting something like that and i'll link the wikora in the youtube description later on but i think that was pretty helpful for me when i park keys in terms of telling people to chill on dps for bursting so other than those two things for bursting I, there's nothing really specific i would like to point out regarding bursting now for storming i actually feel like there is a huge reason to not bring melee and you guys seen me play storming so I think that when storming rolls around, you actually want to run heavy on range comps. And it sounds simple, but it requires you to be a bit more patient in, in forming your group comps as well. Like you can probably run one or two melees, it's fine. But if you're trying to run three melees and a holy paladin, like just what we did on stream earlier tonight, it's a very bad idea <laughs> for storming. Like you'll lose so much DPS from just moving stuff. So range comps, hunters, mages, Boomy is just generally really good for storming. Now the next one is bolstering, which this week is, you know, a real menace. What people don't know is that for bolstering, actually there's a weak aura that can help tanks out there to mark the highest target, the one with the highest health in, in, in terms of your pool. And you will always move Skull to the highest health mob. So it signals to punks that they need to swap to Skull to even up the health for bolstering. And that is a weak aura that I will find and I'll link in the description below as well. So you guys can find it eventually on YouTube, right? So that's something you can do for bolstering. But 
in general, bolstering, like, you don't want to take all three party members who do, like, just AoE. Like, you need, you need at least some guy to do the single target. You can't just go ham on, like, AoE classes and, you know, um, that will never work out well on the bolstering week. Um, you guys saw for yourself when we did DOS, there was a big bird that had, like, 15 stacks or 17 stacks that Insta gave me. I think it was sometime this week. I can't remember. I think it was Thursday night. But that was pretty funny. Uh, next one, Necrotic. So for Necrotic, I think Holy Paladin Healer is obviously really good. And Prop Paladin Tanks obviously being really good as well because of Blessing of Protection, it removes um, Necrotic stacks. And you can basically have a Cancel Aura macro handy. So you can instant cancel your, you know, blessing of protection. So the cancel aura macro that I'm using, I can show you guys in the game here. Um, let me just toggle off this thing. Cancel aura macro is this one. Um, this one. Um, so instead of cancel aura rushing jade wind, you type um, cancel aura blessing of protection, cancel aura um, divine shield, both of which instantly cancels the um, the buffs that you want to get rid of. So basically, you can quickly bop yourself, cancel aura, get rid of it, and you'll clear necrotic. So, goes the same for divine shield. Because obviously, if you have divine shield, then you wouldn't hold trap unless you have bubble thought. But paladin's generally really strong for necrotic weak, so that's something that I have a bit of bias for when it comes to necrotic weak as a tank. And then you want to bind your cancel aura, divine shield, cancel aura, blessing of protection on maybe every single button rotation. Um, every single key bind you have, you should macro it. I used to macro it to something that I use all the time. For example, I'm always spamming judgment, right? So I'll cancel uh, my auras when I spam judgment. That way I, you know, there's no chance of someone being insta gipped when you bubble your necrotic stacks off. So that's necrotic. I do have a, f a slight preference for, for paladins as a tank, um, for, you know, for paladin healers as a tank. But it's not a deal breaker, just something to think about when you're doing your group composition. Next one is Sanguine. So Sanguine in general, I think DKs are really good. Grips, right? Single target grips are really good. Uh, monks are really good. Ring of Peace. Displacement, any form of displacements like Bumi, Typhoon, also really strong. Something you need to think about when you basically run into, you know, those affixes and you're trying to form your own punk group in Mythic Plus. I think those are things that are worth thinking about. The next one is Quaking. Obviously, quaking, don't run all melee because in tight hallways like Sanguine Dead, I guarantee you when you're doing the gauntlet, you're going to run into trouble. So that's something that you want to think about for quaking. And it's worth mentioning that quaking, if you're running like heavy casters, they do lose DPS. Especially like, for example, if you're running fire mages, then they have to hold their combats after quaking. And that delay actually adds up over the entire span of a dungeon. So just take note, like, it's not to say you can't run casters on Quaking. It's just to say that when you're running a lot of casters on Quaking, just be wary that if Quaking comes at a wrong time, you know, like maybe that's your burst gone, right? Your burst damage is gone. So Hunters being really good range DPS on Quaking weeks is something to think about. Explosives. In general, one melee is ideal when you run explosive weeks. Although your your tank, as a tank, you should be primarily responsible for explosives yourself, right? Don't rely on your team or your party members to get the explosives. You should be the one getting them. Because honestly, it's a waste of DPS if they waste their GCDs or resources on ops. And tanks should now be able to one-shot explosives. All tanks, without fail, should be able to one-shot explosives. Now, the next one, obviously, is very obvious. Raging, you need a Soof. Hunter, Druid, Rogues can Soof. I always try and make sure I run a Soof if I'm running something like Theater of Pain. So, like, you know, on the Raging Bloodhorn, it's always good to get a Soof. The other side, always good to get a Soof on the Warlords, else you'll be in for trouble, especially on Fortified Weeks. It is very ideal to get Soofs there, else you're playing it on Hard Mode. Um, and lastly, Spiteful. For Spiteful, I think you just want to make sure you have some form of control. Hunters for Binding, Shamis for Earthbinds, Mage to Nova. And those are basically like all the affix specific um, thoughts I have about group composition. I have some other thoughts as well, which is when it comes to group compositions, pay attention to Bloodlust. 
Like, this is no longer BFA. Drums are so bad right now. They have 15% haste. And a true haste, a true buff from last is 30%. So you're losing 15% throughput. Feels really bad. Especially if you amplify it with pride. So definitely consider that in terms of getting a last. Uh, a pure last. So mage, hunter, shammy. Uh, b rest is also very underrated. A lot of people think, oh, I can get away with just engineering b rest. Nope. Like, if you are serious about it, get a proper b rest. Like, if you guys are all god tier players, yeah, sure, you can probably do without um, a proper b rest. But it's a part. Things will go wrong, get a proper b rest. Those are kind of my guiding principles if I'm pugging and I'm forming a group. And this is something that I'm willing to be very patient on when I'm forming my own pug groups, right? Um, so that's on group composition. I kind of want to talk about some very quick pointers about if you're a new tank and you're starting to park, what are some of the quick tips that you can quickly adopt that will really help with, um, you know, tanking. So the first thing I'll mention is get an auto marker, a mythic pass auto marker. You guys have seen that. Like basically the moment I mouse over a mob, it assigns them a certain symbol. What you can do is basically you can then tell your party members that hey x you are always assigned skull or y you are always assigned star and i don't know hunter you're always on moon so at least they have a marker for reference and yes the markers will change from pool to pool but at least you assign the primary kick right and you can tell them like if there's no markers there you just ffa and kick better than not assigning at all right so that's number one like interrupting just assign them a marker in a part group that generally helps because a lot of you ask if you do not have voice comms what should you do i do think that assigning people specific markers is actually really useful um another thing that's important as a tank is basically world markers i'll show it to you guys basically the way i bind my world markers is i bind it from f5 all the way to f12 so i can drop like world markers pretty quickly um but hang on i reset my keybinds earlier so it isn't working but you can draw um where is that thing hang on miscellaneous hang on i'm actually trying to find it now i think it's bound ah there you go wait why is it not working then oh anyway i bind um all my wall markers from all function groups oh i can't drop it in groups that's why that's why christoph you're right so basically i bind it all in f5 all the way to f12 and the reason why this is important is because like for example on sanguine that right you can then mark like okay stand here stand to the left stand to the right um on the second boss or you can put a marker on the first boss to say okay you need to get this far out to basically not spawn the orbs or something like that or it's just a very handy way to tell people where to go to and also like for example muzala having keybinds like that is super helpful because you can then bind and just drop, you know, the markers and just say, oh, you're square, you're triangle, you're diamond, you're cross. And you don't have to manually, like, I know some of you run, like, a bar or you run some form of, like, rate control and you just literally click the world markers, which will eat a few seconds. And trust me, everyone had missed keys by a few seconds and those could have been your few seconds, right? So that's something to take note of. Um, something else that I will also like to mention is the, um, the, the, the importance of binding your MDTs. So I have my MDTs bound to F4. So throughout a dungeon, I can actually reference MDT. So one way to cheat is basically to resize your MDT and you just place it off to the side like that, right? So you literally like just close MDT. I press F4, I close it. I tank a pool and I'm curious about what the next pool is. I just pull up MDT again while tanking the mobs and I can see like, okay, the next pool is this one and I move here. So key binds or MDT is really useful. Um, I bind it to F4 myself. And if you guys don't know how to do that, you can actually do it here under Mythic Dungeon Tools, under Keybind. Toggle window is where you bind it, right? So that's how you do it. Um, So that's that. And I want to, I want to then move on to talk about like a cheat sheet. Now, why is this important? I do think that when you're pugging, it's worthwhile just giving people like some form of reminder for certain bosses. A Chan Shi, yes, there's a bug with Invispots. Like some abilities are breaking Invispots. I think that's something that they broke on 9.05. So anyway, 
back to this i do want to have a cheat sheet for a reminder right a reminder of you know for each dungeon what are the things to kind of remember and this is a cheat sheet that i would upload on my um website eventually and it's like a it's meant to be a copy and paste cheat sheet right so for example on each boss i think there's certain reminders that, is, that must be set to certain party members right and let's just go one by one uh and let me pull out a notepad so i can actually write the notes here so i think halkias is pretty straightforward on halls of atonement um there's nothing much to say here Echelon, Echelon, there's a lot to say to Parks, by the way. You need to remind Parks uh, for Host Atonement that for Echelon, like, bait the red puddles to the side. That's really important. And also, not to damage ads until they move to middle. Um, because that's that's the biggest problem, right? People, like, they go ham on ads and they start casting at the side. There's no way to kind of group them up. But if you don't do if you don't do any damage to them and everyone stacks in the middle of the ads or congregate near the middle and you just simply aoe them it's super easy so that's the reminder i'll tell parks not to damage ads wait until they move to the middle um and stack in on middle there so that's halls of atonement echelon i think for at least there's nothing to really remind people it's just kick volleys that's all um you can let the boat go through as a tank it's not an issue Lord Chamberlain, um, I think the only thing you want to remind people of is storming a fix. Uh, double soaks are risky, so everyone single soaks or Lord Chamberlain. Other than that, on fortified weeks, I think you want to tell people to um, get out of the Helkias, well, shut up Helkias' trash. Right, that thing hurts. So any form of range should be max ranging the shard of Helkias. And your comp can arguably lean towards a more range heavy comp for Shard of Halkias. So I think a reminder is like move out of max range, DPS, or rather DPS from max range to avoid damage from trash. That's something that I would use to remind Pucks. So that's Halls of Atonement. And let's move to the other side, I guess. So the other side, I think it's just coordinating cooldowns coordinate cc's on the devoted ads near her classroom so just imagine like before you enter the wing you should be copy and pasting the um you should be copy and pasting the reminder that okay you are gonna cap totem first and i will lick sweep second and you know some some guy will do dragon's breath third something like that because the worst thing you can do is on a fortified weeks to let the devoted ads transform and that is a no-go that's a very bad idea um other than that let me see if there's any reminders you want to give um show dope thank you so much for the 30 dollar donation that's super kind of you thank you thank you that's super kind of you really appreciate it um can't thank you enough but you know a lot of the hard work um comes down to the viewers like yourself you put in the hard work and you got better in keys. That's all you. But thank you for the support. I really appreciate it. Um, so that's for her car, I think. Uh, for mana storms, something that you need to remind chat, um, you need to remind people of on the other side is do not, do not kill um, Mill House. Do not kill Mill House if you have pride and lust, right? Because what some pucks will do is they'll literally have pride running into Mill House on a fortified week, they'll pop Bloodlust and they'll kill Milhouse. But the problem with killing Milhouse is that when you fight Maleficent Mana Storm, she does that stacking blade debuff on the tank. And the only way to, to drop your debuff is through the Shadow Fury, right? But if you kill Milhouse, guess what? You have no more Shadow Fury. And that's how you likely die. So what we normally do, and at least for my groups, is we toll cooldowns for the first boss during the first phase and we literally just say bloodlust so make sure that you work on maleficent mana storm with the rest of your cooldowns because if you do not have milhouse mana storm you have no shadow fury maleficent mana storm will do that robot chicken thing that really hurts and let me pull up the actual ability name here um it's called 
there you go it's called um what is it called there aerial rocket chicken barrage this thing hurts like crazy if you do not have a shadow fury stun for this thing good luck to your healer because just a lot of damage and you need the shadow fury debuff which can only be available if you do not kill millhouse mana storm so that's the reminder copy paste that for your parks do not kill it um that's the second thing the third thing is dealer zxa on this um dungeon dealer zxa what you want to make sure is there's two rules to passing the bomb right you want to pass the bomb you do not want the bomb debuff well, not the bomb debuff, the arcane debuff to be sticking on someone all the time. This is really important. Um, this arcane lightning, right? This is really painful. You do not want to keep applying the one stack of arcane vulnerability, um, you know, constantly to the same person. So how do you deal with this is there's two rules when it comes to arcane lightning. You want to pass the arcane lightning to the, uh, or rather you can, you can pass it to anyone except um, number one, the person with the bomb. And the person with the bomb is the one that's being marked with the bomb on the head and they have to take the trap and fly up into the air. That's the person you do not want to pass the debuff to. That's number one. Rule number two, do not pass the debuff back to the person who gave you the debuff. Okay, so for example, A pass to B. B should pass it to C or D or E. B should never pass it back to A. Um, so that's the second thing. Do not pass it back to person who gave you. Um, that way you can always make sure that everyone is on relatively low stack. So those are the two golden rules. Paste it to your punk groups. The, the way the debuff jumps is that the game will triangulate who's the nearest friendly party member to you and you will simply jump to that person. So that's something that you need to take note of. Make sure you adhere to these two rules to pass the Arcane Lightning debuff. Can't stress it enough. This is the reason why people wipe on high keys for dealer ZXA. They do not manage the debuff properly. So other than that, the fourth one I think everyone knows on the other side, which is Muzala. Save, save big DPS CDs for Visage. Um, nobody pops anything at the start. Tanks should be ready to rotate externals for defensives and externals on every soul crusher this is something that you should take note of on tyrannical weeks when you get soul crusher before you fly off to the visage platform just note that it's a dot so it will eat into you even when you're flying in mid air i've died mid air before by the way so make sure you have a health pot ready uh, that's basically all there is to it i would say in terms of the other side so that's the second dungeon you know again all the all the stuff we discussed will be in a copy and paste cheat sheet that you guys can just like find off my website and paste it to people so I'll, I'll i'll upload all those on my website eventually by the way so you guys can literally just copy and paste the instructions to your uh, part groups um so that's the other side now the third one is miss of turner scythe um so for me and by the way i'm not reading some of the comments because this will be on YouTube, so I just want to keep the discussion on point, but I do appreciate the gesture from, from some of you. Thanks for the support. Uh, Miss of Turner's Scythe, I think there's nothing really to remind people of at the start, except the skip. So you guys know after you pull the first two packs, normally people will skip one of the uh, packs with the... Um, let me just pull up the name so it's easier <laughs> it's easier to just show you guys the map so there you go Miss of Turner Scythe so what people normally do is they will basically um pull this front ones and they'll skip this pack right they will skip G9 so the most important reminder is that on G9 the G9 skip you want to make sure no one is in combat. I can't stress this enough. Because what would happen is, and I've seen this happen too many times, hunter traps or mage sheeps. Rest of the party walks across the mob here that is sheep or trap. And the first guy that walks past will get aggro. And because he's not a mage or he's not a hunter, he can't feign death or invis to drop trap. So the right way to do it is that you get the hunter or the mage to basically CC first, 
Hunter or Mage crosses first. Party members follow. Hunter feign deaths or Mage invis. That's how you do it. Or the other way is some people, the way people mess this up is they get a monk and they paralyze this guy, the harvester, and they do not ring the harvester to the left. So they all think that, oh, they can cross. And they simply cross and the person closest to the harvester gets in combat. Now, the most important thing is you need to remind people to check that they're not in combat when they do this skip. Because if you don't, this thing will remain CC. Nothing will happen. You will go into the next pack and you'll pull this pack. And when the CC runs out, the person who wasn't aware he was in combat will literally aggro G9. And that usually is a wipe for the fight weeks. Because this pack is pretty insane. Like two soul cleavers, um, two soul cleavers plus, you know, the bow breaker and, you know, the two harvesters and another soul cleaver. It's really hard to recover. So, number one, make sure people check they're not in combat when you're skipping that in Miss of Turner Scythe. It's important. Um, what's the next one on Miss of Turner Scythe? I think. You guys saw from my videos, get the add-on to solve puzzles on the fly, right? Download the add-on, Miss of Turner Scythe Helper, I've been using it for a couple of days now. This is this thing is invaluable as a tank. Like you move from pillar to pillar and you can solve the entire puzzle yourself without using your brains at all. So this is not really not so much a tip, but it's really like something to take note of. And in terms of the remaining bosses, um, oh, wait, hang on, this is really important. Unlock graveyards. This is of something that's very underestimated. I've actually entered keys because we did not unlock the graveyard. We did not take three seconds to unlock the graveyard. I know it sounds simple, but make sure people unlock the graveyard. Because if you wipe somehow on, I don't know, the slugs or something, right? Or you somehow pull the reavers on a fortified week and the poison stacks are just too much and you guys wipe, at least the recovery is fast. But if you don't unlock your graveyards, you're asking for trouble. Um, the third thing is you can actually not kick consumption if your healer can manage it. So that way, Tredova spawns less ads and spawns less asset puddles. Other than that, nothing too much I would say in terms of what you need to remind Pucks on for, for Miss of Turner Scythe. It's pretty straightforward. Um, that's Miss of Turner Scythe, Plague Fall. Um, Plague Fall, something really important. This is not really like a tip to your pucks but it's really more like a reminder you should try and run something that has a cc on the big ad for, for glob drop right so this is basically a monk paralyze hunter trap warlock banish i think those are the three main ones if i'm not wrong that can cc the big ad so you want to assign the ccs oh wait root i forgot sorry my bad druids roots can do it too um, you want to assign the CC a oh, rope line. Yeah, you're right. Rope line. You're right. Rope line. Assign the CCs before you pull, so you don't double. Paladin can turn evil. Right. Writing that down. Paladin turns evil. Um. So you want to assign your CCs before you pull, because I've seen this happen where everybody uses their CCs at once, and um, uh, you end up messing up. You know the CCs, and that ends up really like. Because you guys know, like, for example, if let's say a rogue, let's say a monk paralyzes the first, and then he ends up paralyzing, like, the second ad, it will naturally cause the first one to break. So always assign um, your CCs. That's number one. Um, other than that, Dr. Ickers. I think Dr. Ickers is worth explaining something, which is hard to put into text, but I think it's still worth copy-pasting. So Dr. Ickers, when Dr. Ickers jumps, he lands... The cross that he forms, the very how you how you determine the cross is based on where he jumps from. So let's say he jumps from this point to this point, that forms like one quarter of the cross. So from that one um you know dimension of him jumping from this point to this point, you can triangulate the cross that way. So it's always the front, like Taiju Ten says, it's always his front, his back, his left, and his right. So north, south, east, west. So um, it's something that I guess, like, I don't know, if you're doing like low keys, it's just worth copy and pasting north, south, east, west of boss face, uh, facements or facing uh, dodge crosses. That's really it. Um, and it's in pucks, right? So 
I wouldn't like try to do advanced shenanigans like CC the pestilence uh, that he does. So obviously he will do like this pestilence search, which you can really just ignore. You can ignore this thing if you have someone that's fast enough to CC it, but it's a park, so I really wouldn't trust anyone not to break CCs. But if it's a coordinator group, hey, gonna DK to grip it out, ring it out, paralyze. You can basically trap this guy and you end up not having to waste DPS on this slime. So something to think about. But in parks, I wouldn't bother copy pasting. Uh, third one, I think just a reminder to people, reminder to people on Domina to stack in. If you don't stack in, you end up being web. If not, you get CC. Um, the other thing on Domina is help hang break out ads with AoE. That really helps. So if you have any forms of like AoEs on the ground stuff, and you can easily help the tank break it out. Um, you should definitely do it. And a reminder the healer to dispel. Yes, let me write it down. Remember to dispel debuff on Dr. Akers. Yep. I've run with healers who don't dispel. That was pretty awkward. Died really quickly. Um, so that's that for Domina. And for Margrave, this is really important. So on Margrave, the best way to do this is basically... Ah, yes, Sir Yemi, this will be on YouTube. Along with all the written notes. So you guys can literally copy and paste to your chat groups. I mean, your punk groups. So Margrave, um, the most important reminder for Margrave is that you need to assign cooldowns. Don't have everyone pop cooldowns at the start. That's suicidal. So for Margrave, what you want to do, the reminder that you want to send to your group is... Assign one CD for first phase. And the rationale is you should have pride for first phase. Um, so you should have pride on the first phase. So one CD is enough to phase the boss in time without too much damage going out. And during the second phase, you want two DPS CDs. And then you want to save Bloodlust on third phase. Right? Um, other than that, something else to remember for reminders to Pucks is remind Pucks to not get melee by ads i.e. watch aggro basically the ads they move really slowly but they melee really hard so if you get aggro on them it's fine just don't stand in front of them and get melee because your healer is stressed out enough healing um, you know the infectious rain so just be very careful about aggro uh, that's something i will tell my pucks for sure like just dodge tentacles and avoid avoid getting meleeed by mobs that's all i'll literally tell them those are the important things for plague fall um so that's that honestly i think if there's anything i'll add for plague fall it's like um help on plague forest uh to cc ads uh root them so basically on plague boros what i meant is when plague boros about to explode Get your party to drop Trian, stuns, or something to just make sure the ads are staying in the explosion. That way your tank can get out, right? So just a little thing to help the tank. Um, so that's Plickfall. I think that's pretty straightforward. In terms of Sanguine Dab, oh, this is a big one. And honestly, Sanguine Dab is like, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. And it feels like there's just so much reminders needed to punks. <laughs> okay. Um, I think the first is... On the first boss to stagger, right? First boss, stagger orbs in terms of soaks. Right? Ideally, you want um, your tank to run all the way to the entrance and the tank can solo soak one of the orbs right, early and then from then on, let your healer catch up and you can slowly pop the other orbs. But don't pop them all at once. They're suicidal. So that's the first reminder. Um, Executor Tavol uh you know the puck killer very important i think for pucks you need to remind them save cds for small ad ideally assign cds ideally assign cooldowns for tiny ad you don't want everyone to pop everything at the start and you have nothing at all um you do want to save a bit maybe like maybe it's even like a dps pot maybe it's not even cooldowns just save a dps pot for the little tiny ad so it dies quick because the thing is you know dangerous other than that, just remind people to move with tank left and right on platforms. So you guys seen how it works and I've seen, I've done it in keys basically like and you guys can find sanguine that POVs of mine which is basically you move the boss back to the gargoyle and you let the beams travel left and right 
the moment there's a beam that passes on your left or your right, you move to the other side. So for example, if the beam passes on my left, it moves to the left. And then the beam will move on my right. So that's that. Just a reminder to Pucks. Swap to ads, do not tunnel. Uh, Grand Proctor. Might be worth telling people that if you have immunities, call them out. So someone can soak more orbs. Um, if let's say someone opts to immune a certain wave um, of the, what's it called? Right of Supremacy, right? So make sure like if your hunters, mages in your group, they should be calling out like, oh, I'm going to immune this, pick up more orbs here. Like it, it will matter in higher and higher keys. This thing will matter because the damage is pretty nutty. Um, from general cull, honestly, nothing to really emphasize. I guess it's just a reminder in the hallways to always spread because of cleaves. Even on the last boss, um, just make sure on the last boss, like people spread and and not cleave, right? And because if basically cow cleaves you, like there's just too much damage to heal. So I think those are the reminders for Sanguine Dead. Oh, one more. Um, do not AOE in hallways. Well, you can AOE in hallways, but do not pull in the bat on hallways. And you guys know what I mean. It's like um, after the first boss, you know, there's a there's a chance you might pull the bat um, while, while you're crossing the bridge. The other thing is, um, when you're crossing crossing bridge into custodian javelin's room do not AOE the entrance of the room else you end up pulling the overseer pack together with the custodians so I'll show you guys like I've seen many people in keys on this before as well so when you cross the bridge here on screen here you cross the bridge right you pull the stream mobs I've seen people AOE here and they accidentally tag in the first dirt cruncher. The moment you tag in one dirt cruncher, like everything else aggroes. So one of the safer ways you can do this is simply like just pull G18 backwards here and just deal, it, deal with it here. And that way you wouldn't end up having to, um, you know, pull dirt crunchers in by accident. And the other thing is there's this bat that pat, uh, the pets here. If you drop some like wow spirits on the bridge, you will accidentally tag in the bats as well. I've seen that happen too many times. So just be very careful not to tag in the bats because it will mess up with your count. Same thing goes for the final gauntlet. There are bats here. So make sure like you do not accidentally pull in the bats with your insane AoE. Um, Earth Elemental apparently can taunt in the ads. That's something I learned the hard way. Um, so that's something to take note of. So those are the things that I would send as a reminder for Sanguine Dab. Um, On to Spires of Ascension. I think the most important thing for Spires is you need to assign kicks, assign two kicks for Goliath. So how the Goliath works is kick once, kick twice, he will recharge, first person kicks again. And by then the Goliath should be dead. But always assign first and second kick to Goliaths before you start the dungeon. Super important. Can't stress it enough. And then you assign third kicks and fourth kicks for the castigators who do Dark Lash. That's the other thing you need to kick. Other than the mending. The mending is important to kick too. But make sure you always assign kicks for Goliath first and second. Can't stress it enough. So that's what to do when you start SOA. Um, I think other than that, the other boss, oh wait, maybe for the third boss, third boss, coordinate who soaks ops. So obviously if you have someone like a hunter or you have a brewmaster or a pally, you know, they should be very good candidates for dealing with ops. Well, the rest can basically DPS the third boss while he's taking double damage. That is important. Um, other than that, I can't really think of anything that's super important for spires. Spires honestly just comes down to whether you can do V2 Nax properly. V2 Nax is, well, I guess you can remind people on V2 Nax. Uh, V2 Nax pop defensive cooldowns on bleeds. This is really important in high keys. So you just remind people to pop defensives or pots, health pots on 
the bleed, the setting hurts. Other than that, nothing too important in Spires of Ascension. Like, kick Goliath, kick Darklash. Those are the most important thing. Alright, moving on from Spires. Necrotic Wig. In terms of reminder, I think this is something that I, I like to tell my pucks um, if I'm taking it seriously. Number one, on Blightbone, face the vomits away from people. Really important. Uh, Sir Yemi, thank you so much for the subscription and support. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, but back to Blightbone, if he's targeting you with the vomit, face it away from the party. So the best way to do it is basically have vomit target face the stage or the back of the room. Uh, Trax, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but the target, the vomit target should be facing away. So what we normally get people to do is, you know, face the stage or the back of the room. Everyone else moves the front of the room, right? So that way, there's only one guy getting hit by the vomit. They don't take unnecessary damage. So that's number one. That's why I'll remind people uh, for Necrotic Wake. So um, the first boss is pretty straightforward. On Amath, it's worthwhile coordinating CCs. If you have a hunter, monk, who can trap or paralyze the mage. So that way, you can basically ignore the mages. You can literally like CC both mages, leave them alone, and you don't have to deal with them. When they explode, you wouldn't take damage. So that's something you can do if you do have the right comp for it. Um, if not, I think the most important thing about Amath is just making sure that you coordinate kicks on the mages, meaning who are the people running out to kick the mages in. And usually these are the ranged DPS. Um, if no CCs, coordinate kicks on Amath. Um, so that's for Amath. The other thing in Necrotic Wake that's important to coordinate right from the start is Spears. Spears plus Hammers. Who is using Spears and Hammers where? You do not want to use both Spears on a single boss. I've seen that happen. Like you don't, you don't communicate in chat. You don't talk about it in parks. Literally three Spears are being used on Amath. I've seen that happen before. So just make sure you call where to use spears and hammers if you're forming the group and you're leading the park. And I guess other than that, nothing too important on um, Naltor or Rimbinder. I think everyone knows what to do in general. Surgeon Stitch Flash, nothing too important. I guess just a reminder, like if you do not have the DPS to one face Surgeon, when the, when escape is about to happen, face the final hook to the boss's platform. So the moment he jumps, right, then the hook will go out on the platform. So just remember, like, when escape is about to happen, just remind your parks, if you can't one phase it, then the add, make sure that the hook is pointed to, like dead on center to the stage, because you can then hook the boss instantly off the stage again, uh, using the first abomination. So just, just a little nifty reminder. Necrotic Wake is done, final dungeon, Theater of Pain. In terms of what to tell your pucks, I think um, Theater of Pain, what is important here is, I think definitely Soothe the Bloodhorn. Soothe Bloodhorn at the start. Like this, by the way, on high keys, you need an instant Soothe. It is critical because that thing really hurts. And you need an instant soof because the tank is taking a lot of damage on fortified. And other than that, um, trigger RP of mini bosses at the correct time. So what do I mean? So if you guys look at Theater of Pain. All right, so the problematic one is this one, right? Nevermore and Wreck the Harden. This is the, tr the problematic uh, mini boss. Uh, Nevermore is the one you do not want because Nevermore has this annoying ability to put a shield up. Uh, very similar to the mechanized peacekeepers in BFA where you actually need to go behind the shield to DPS. If you are casting, let's say, I don't know, Pyroblast 
from in front of the shield, the mob will not take damage. So this is a DPS loss if you get Nevermore. Um, because if you if you have range comms, then the problem is you, you lose movement and DPS. So how do you make sure you never get Nevermore? What you want to do is you want to make sure that when you're standing far, right? When you're doing this pack, you're standing far. You will watch the two mobs take turns to melee one another. You want to make sure that Rack the Harden melees Nevermore first. After the melee, you walk close to trigger the RP. And he will and basically Rack will kill off um, Nevermore. And you wouldn't aggro immediately, you can just quickly trigger the RP and back off. But that way you guarantee that you get Rack. And while you finish up this pool here. So that's something to take note of if you want to min back stuff in your punk groups. Um, other than that, I would say assign kicks to Bone Spear. Um, the really dangerous pull is. Um, let me show you. So the dangerous pull is probably this one. This is a dangerous pull. G11. Assign kicks to Volley. As bone spear. Those are the two dangerous abilities that you just need to kick. Like everything else is like on a on most level of keys is not a big deal. Like on higher keys, sure, necrotic bolt hurts. But both volley, this one, and um the other one is bone spear. These two things hurt for the fight. So always assign kicks to bone spear and volley. Super critical. And eventually, when you get to the final platform, which is this one, um, just remind people to this this on this cool tarot pack before the boss g20 just remind people again kick volley a bone spear and more importantly dodge frontals can't stress this enough don't die to frontals don't get knocked off um, sometimes parks just need a reminder and let me see bosses wise nothing too difficult cool tarot gore chop i guess gore chop you can remind people of a copy paste that if range on Gorchop, you can play in melee range, not get hooked in by Gorchop, equals more reaction time to dodge chains from the side. It's something you can just remind people of. Um, and on Mordrata, I think the way I would do it is just save Bloodlust for 50% and DPS cooldowns for 50%. The only exception is if you have one minute cooldowns, I feel. It is probably like Fire Mages. I think they can combust right at the start and you'll be back up again. Um, but other than that, say Bloodlust for 50%. That's the most difficult phase. Phase 1 honestly doesn't matter. You just need to zerk Phase 2 as fast as possible. This is the most difficult. So that's that, I think, uh, for all the 8 dungeons. For theater of pain, I think that's about it. So that's it, chat. I think um, what I'll do is for all these eight dungeons, I'm gonna paste. I'm gonna tidy up the notes, everything we verbally discussed, and it will be some form of table where you can have it open on your second monitor, and you literally copy and paste like certain text when you reach certain parts of the dungeon um, to your pucks. Just as a reminder, like this is a a response to a lot of people asking me, hey, what if I do my pucks without voice comms? What should I do? Well, text is your best friend. Sometimes you just have to use something old school, like copy and pasting text to your group to remind them to do certain things. So that's what I'll do. Um, I'll tidy it up and I'll post it along with this YouTube video. Um, it'll probably be in the description and it's like a table on my website that you guys can copy and paste. That's how I think about it. So that's it for the fireside chat. Honestly, those are the things that I kind of want to discuss. Uh, with you know you guys because this was a question that was always brought up in my in my streams which is you pug a lot do you have any tips for pugging i think those are the things i think about i'm um, sorry if i did not read every single comment um, in my chat i kind of wanted to keep the discussion um you know on track but those are everything i wanted to cover and yeah thanks for tuning in for the fireside chat that's super um, at least for me, I think um, that was pretty productive in terms of getting through what I wanted to cover this week. If you guys have any other topics that you want me to cover next week or the week after, feel free to suggest in terms of topics. This fireside chat, Dimiko, will be uploaded to my YouTube channel, so you can probably watch it in the next um, coming two days. It will be uploaded there, so you can definitely watch it there in case you miss it. So 
Hopefully that helps you guys with your pugging of keys and whatnot. And I think that will be, you know, a lot smoother in terms of forming pucks and whatnot. Yep, so that's it for the fireside chat. Um, if you have any ideas like what you want me to talk about next time, let me know. Um, I think all the three fireside chats recently have always been suggested by viewer topics. So I'm always on the lookout for more topics to, to cover. And that, my friend, sums up the fireside chat. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, do subscribe to the channel. I publish daily World of Warcraft content on this channel. And as usual, if you want my weak auras and user interfaces for every single spec in the game, it's entirely free, also in the description below. If you want to join us for the next Twitch live stream, my Twitch handle is also in the description below. Lastly, a big thank you to my Patreon subscribers for making this community possible, and a big thank you to you for supporting my videos. Have a great day, and I'll see you really soon.